So without further ado, we have my man, Mr. Terry Kelly today. Terry is uh, a friend of mine. We've been friends now for probably, gosh, I think five or so years. And I love his story of how he got to EXP because it, it shows, I guess, no obstacle in your way can stop you from joining if you're really in, intrigued with the model, if you're really committed to making it happen. So some people I feel like just want to poke a stick at it. You know, maybe it'll work out, but they're not really committed. But when when the person really wants it, they'll do anything that it takes to, to get here. And him and his business partner, Chris Snow, definitely made that happen. So, so Terry, without further ado, introduce yourself, where you're at in the world, and share a little backstory in, in one to two minutes of what you were up to before EXP. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm down in uh, Florida, uh, northeast part of Florida in Orange Park, actually. But uh, I joined the Navy when I was 17, you know, went, went away, came back 23 years later, retired, uh, married, have two beautiful daughters, three great grandkids. And, uh, you know, we're just enjoying life, you know, with them now. Actually, the the, the girl sitting behind me is my granddaughter. She got her license when she was 19 and she's starting to crank it out now. So I'm pretty excited for her. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, well, I, I retired in 91 from the Navy and just kind of did some different things. Worked for the city, ran an air conditioning company, uh, got my appraiser's license in 2000. Uh, didn't like that. Got Went into mortgages in 2003. Didn't like that. Got my real estate license in 2005, and I said, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. So uh, Chris and I hooked up actually back about then. We were, we went to church together and started, we started in mortgage together, both got our licenses and worked at a Remax, uh, decided when the market tanked uh, to open our own brokerage. I got my license, broker's license, opened up an independent in 2010. In 2014, opened another independent brokerage up. 2015, we ended up buying a Century 21 franchise. And then, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think when it was. That's 2015, early 2018. John Mikish was my coach. Uh, so we were. he knew we, Chris and I were frustrated with uh, Century 21. And he says, well, I got this guy you probably want to talk to. And we had met AJ uh, going to uh, actually uh, uh, Lars's uh, coaching program is where I think the first we met you. Yeah, in Charlotte uh, at the at the event that Lars did in Charlotte, that was probably yeah. shoot 2016, yeah. 2015. Yeah. So, so I like that though. Like I was recruiting for EXP be like three years before I was even at EXP. <laughs> I know. I, I, I laugh about that. And uh, I'll, I'll share that part too. But anyway, so John goes, well, I know you guys don't like it there. He goes, why don't you talk to, you know, AJ, right? He says, talk to AJ. So Chris called AJ and he sent us the, uh, the uh, video. And I took it, I went home, watched it that night. Chris went home, watched it that night. The next morning we sat down and we said, okay, how are we going to get out of here? Uh, Cause we had a, we were, we still had seven years left on our uh, Century 21 franchise. So uh, long story short, uh, nine months later, we wrote a check for $90,000, bought our way out of it and uh, never looked back. It was probably, it was uh, that $90,000 was the best money with Chris and I ever spent, I think. So, yeah, that's amazing. See, when there's a, when there's a will, there's a way. And we always need to tread lightly when talking to franchisees because of a term called torches interference. So whenever we're talking to franchisees, just make sure that you get in touch with someone that has more experience than you so you don't get yourself in uh, any legal uh, issues. So, and that was a long process. It wasn't as simple as writing the check, we're out of here. I, I think I was talking with you guys for, I know it was months. It was from when you're like, we want to join to when you could actually join. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Was it, was, it was like January, I think. It, it, if it was, it was January, maybe early February in 2018, we started talking and uh, we had already, uh, KV, uh, uh, Keller Williams had approached us because, you know, we were, we were, I think we were only like six people in our office, but we were the second highest producing Century 21 agent uh, company in the uh, office in the area. So uh, Keller reached out to us and they were offering us, you know, our own office and assistance and all that. So we were looking hard at them actually when we saw the video. And it, the thing about EXP was that's what Chris and I had been trying to develop for 10 years. I mean, 
we we love the agents. We want them to succeed. You want their families. You know, we we cover for agents. You know, when they have something come up, all that stuff. That was that's just that's Chris and my's nature, and uh, we always struggled with it, being able to actually produce that. It was you know a lot of time and effort went into trying to develop the platforms that just come with EXP. And we saw that and we went like, that's that we got to get there. So uh, they, the initial thing was 240 grand to buy our way out. So uh, over that nine months, we finally figured out what we actually did is we got another, uh, another franchise owner wanted to get in the St. Augustine area. So he bought, we paid him $90,000 to take ours over and century 21 couldn't stop it. So that's how we eventually, uh, broke out but nice just out of curiosity how's that office doing now they closed they closed <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know the answer to that <laughs> just yeah, curious. yeah I, was like, don't... <laughs> I was like don't say they're doing better uh, they're a managing broker for that office that he bought the the, the guy, that guy bought and he opened he moved it about two miles away from us that guy is now a managing broker for florida exp mike williams so really yeah. wow Cool. So, so you joined EXP 2018. Uh, you had you had a team. So you had a team at Century 21. Brought your team to EXP. What what was your production volume when you came to EXP? And then how has it grown over the years? We were yeah. We had like ten agents. Uh, we, Chris and I came. We brought five and five. I couldn't come right away because I still had the uh, one of the uh, independent brokerages. Took me about a week to shut it down. Uh, so I came over about a week after Chris did us technically, but we split the team up. Each took five. Uh, our production was right around 40 million, 165, 170 homes a year. <clears throat> uh, I stepped out of production in 20, you know, 2020 actually, but I think last year it was a hundred, a hundred million, 225 houses or, you know, units sold. Nice. And he's That's building. Awesome. You know, he's, he's. We were always kind of our our mindset was we we want producers, you know, um, and so we kind of limited the growth. It, it's all bets are off now. You know, he, uh, Chris is trying to build it to about a fifty man team now. Uh, and I don't want any part of that, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's, uh, I just, uh, I enjoy my life too much, but anyway, yeah. so it's over hundred, it, it more than doubled, uh, in the four years we've been there. That's amazing. So you got some rupture coming in, the business is growing. When you guys initially made the switch, was it primarily for revenue share or were there other pillars of EXP that attracted you to the model? No, it, uh, well, the stock didn't, I didn't even pay attention to the stock. Uh, I think stock was like four or $5 a share then. Um, rev share was an interest because that made sense to us. Cause you know, we would bring an agent in, you know, the classic story, bring a guy had never done real estate first year, puts 90,000 in his pocket next year, a hundred and some. And he comes to me and says, you got to pay me more. I'm making you all this money, you know? So they leave, you know, and then we didn't have, you know, there was one thing we couldn't give them any more money. You know, we were already, you know, uh, we 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 didn't have the best strategy as far as paying our commission splits. John used to hammer us on that all the time. But um, but anyway, so when we saw what we could offer uh, and that if somebody, you know, you help somebody up and they they want to form a team or something, it just made sense to do it. That's I think that's the big thing that clicked with both Chris and I. Rev share was part of it. You know, we, that was definitely an interesting uh, twist, but being able to build somebody up, maintain the relationship, and it's not some bitter, you know, divorce going on. You actually help people move. Yeah. That's the beauty of the model for teams and independent brokerages. It's uh, or, or franchisees coming over. It's like, man, what a great retention piece that we have. And if they do decide to leave the, the team, well, we still can benefit. We can still work together. I had a listing agent when I joined EXP. Gosh, she was probably with me for about six months before I joined EXP. I helped him get from what he was doing before into real estate. He became a, a top agent pretty quickly. And he left me like six months after, after joining EXP. So he was with me for like a year. And I helped him get in the business. I trained him up, got him to the point where he's selling two, three homes a month. And then he left and it was like disappointing, of course, but had I been with KW, 
he would have been gone forever. However, because of EXP, I continued to make revenue share, not only from his production, from but the people he recruited, which was like, I mean, his organization's probably like, gosh, I'd have to look, but it's around 80 people. You know, that's that's pretty awesome. It's very, uh, very good. So uh, yeah. that's one of my favorite things about the model. And and that's a key thing I want you guys to hone on, hone in on when talking to teams, people looking at starting teams, brokerages is that that piece because a lot of people don't see that and and it's important uh john's video john if you want to post the link to your video with cliff freeman i think that's a really good video that kind of talks about that mindset a little bit i always share that with people who are teams and or think about starting a team uh so let's shift gears a little bit terry so you, you guys come to exp what was the mindset when it came to building your revenue share what was the strategy what was the first few things that you did well and then we'll kind of go to the things that maybe you would have done differently. Yeah, the uh, we we but neither one of us were on fire for rev share. We knew it was something, but we were more concerned with bringing the team over and building it out, and then learning everything. But early on, uh, we you know we start and you remember uh, you got you graced us with uh, we we were doing lunch and learns there. I think we're the only lunch and learns going on in the Jacksonville area for years. We we did lunch and learns for like three years straight, I think it was. Uh, but we weren't, neither one of us were on fire. Uh, Chris was talking to more people, but I, I never, I didn't have a lot of relationships with agents. You know, my, my, my dealings was more behind the scene, but so Chris got traction a lot quicker than I did. But uh, so early on, we knew that we needed to do lunch and learns. We got a couple people involved in it, but it became the same people coming every week, you know, that kind of thing. We moved mm -hmm. them, put them in a restaurant, got people to sponsor it. That helped a little bit, but, you know, that was just a couple months and then that faded off. And we were actually, you know, it was, I guess about a year ago when we had Brent come in, uh, I was talking to him about it and I said, you know, we're just struggling. I said, I'm not even bringing people to lunch. And I can't. I can't point my finger at other people, but I'm not even, I don't know. And he said, yeah, he goes, uh, they, they serve their purpose, but you can run out of, he goes, I don't, I don't even do them anymore. So we stopped that and we've shifted. Now uh, our focus is on training events. Uh, what, you know, Kathy was talking about and that's what we do. I do two tra live training events a month. Uh, we focus on the things that they're looking for. We did, we've done lead generation, foreclosures, luxury listings, cybersecurity, you know, something that catches the press and everybody's eyes, I mean, catches their ears, you know, we'll do. Cybersecurity was for uh, um, wire fraud was what it focused on. Referral marketing, lead conversion. I'm doing a big event on uh, artificial intelligence on the 6th. So we're trying to find things that, you know, people want to hear come in and uh, and then recruit from that. I've done a very poor job of the follow up on that. That's the we're doing the events and we're getting people there, but then nothing's happening afterward. And that just that really falls on me. But that's what we're focusing on now is more the training events, local live training events cool. to interact. So you start off with lunch and learns. It gets to the point where maybe they're a little redundant in your area. A lot of people have either been or or at least been invited. So you just kind of transition from a straight lunch and learn. For those of you that don't know, it was just, hey, come have a free lunch and hear about EXP. I got to hang out with you guys at your office there and, and we did one great turnout. I think we had, geez, probably 15, maybe 15 or so people there mm -hmm. back in 2018. Uh, great lunch and learn. So now you're adding value at these events that you're doing, I guess, what's the format of that for people that might want to um, do? Are you also during that meeting sharing EXP at the end? No, uh, it's totally, I mean, you know, I tell people I'm EXP, you know, obviously, you know, if you want to talk to me, I'm here for it, but this event is for you. And then we go right into the event. Um, and it's it's been well received because I actually one one person I'm talking to that I picked up through the training she owns a, a franchise she owns a franchise here I don't know they have 50 60 agents but she and I have met a couple times we've actually exchanged videos of our companies you know and uh, 
she watched the Brent Go thing and we talked about that. She goes, this is very interesting. So I don't see her coming over, but you never know. Uh, and then, I, so anyway, that's, we're, we're, they're comfortable enough bringing their people to our training. Okay. Because I've t I, t I told her, I said, look, I'm not going after your people, but if anybody gets upset and is thinking about going, I want to talk to them. She goes, no, no problem with that. So, uh, but our focus is bringing them in, uh, providing the training that they want uh, or that catches their ear or is going to actually help them grow their business. And then we work from that. Do, do you run any ads for that or is it all just word of mouth? No, I do. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Eventbrite and then post it in Facebook. I haven't paid for any kind of uh, ads. We're, we're, we're thinking about starting that, but right now we'll get 30, 40 people to the training event. So and is there, um, I guess the question would be, you know, how's it converting? It's always been my belief that if you're going to do the event, get people in the door, at least say, hey, the official meeting's over, box lunch are in the corner. If you want to sit down and hear why we partnered with EXP and yada, 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 do you say a little spiel, grab your lunch, come sit back down. If not, that's cool too. Just grab your lunch. Thanks for coming. We're doing another one next month on cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, because I feel like if you get their butt in the seat, they got to hear about EXP because you may lose them forever otherwise. So how, what what do you feel like has been maybe the effectiveness of getting them to join EXP, assuming that's the the main purpose or the sole purpose of this strategy? Yeah, it's, yeah we haven't we ha we haven't had a lot. I mean, we've had our downline have brought people and they've brought people in, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't think Chris and I have actually brought anybody over from the events. So. And that's, you know, that's, I'm refocusing the, the eye-opening thing, just to give you an idea where I'm at, I'm going through the, I'm having to revamp everything I'm doing. Uh, and I've, I've joined the group Mike was, uh, John was talking about, because I, I need that accountability personally. My yeah. goal when I came over, I'm older, I'm, you know, I've got retirement coming in and all that kind of stuff. But my goal to make life sweet for me was 250 agents. If I can get to 250 agents, then, you know, like I'm done. And uh, so I'm looking, I got 115 agents now and I'm going like, dang, it seems like I'm doing a lot of work and I'm only at 115 and, uh, but I've only got eight qualified, you know, or FLQAs. But I went, I said, and I went back to this morning, actually, I looked, I've, I've brought, I had 243 people in my organization over the last couple of years and but I've only kept 115 couple couple things there one is uh we made a mistake and went hard after new agents uh, and unless you can unless you can bring them into your team uh it's real tough to hold on they, you know they if they don't engage they're gone uh so I I hit my number 250. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately they're not all with me anymore but so anyway i've i've realized that i need to change my strategy and that's a good point what we didn't bring exp up because uh people uh even other exp agents won't come to the events and they go mm -hmm. that's your event i'm going like you idiot it's for everybody you know bring bring them you know i have bill price will call me up hey you're doing an event and i said yeah you can i send somebody i'm going well, yeah, <laughs> so that's cool. Tell me who it is when we won't recruit them. You know, I mean, I, you know, I don't know if you send them by themselves. Yeah, I may, I may join. You haven't joined, but anyway. yeah, maybe maybe play with that. You know, for that one gal that's sending her people to your thing. You know, she may not love it, but I remember it was it's probably March 2019. My wife and I were on our RV trip around the U.S. We stayed the winter in Breckenridge, Colorado, where I got to see you and your, your lovely bride because um, you guys were there for your annual trip. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just drove into Denver because Mike Reese was doing an event there called like Double Your Listings or something. I think I actually dropped Abby off at the airport or something. And I stopped by there on the way back. So I figured, oh, Mike's in town. I'll say hi and see how he's recruiting agents. So, so I go in there, sit down, and he delivered content value for probably an hour to two hours. I don't remember exactly. And, and he, and he used that exact strategy. Like he, he delivered great content. People were excited to hear what he had to say. And then he's just like, Hey, it was Chick-fil-A box lunch in the hallway. He said the event's officially over, but then he had his, his elevator pitch on why he joined EXP or, or at least teased to why he joined, grab your lunch, 
come back in if you want to hear about it. If not, the event's officially done. And he like started clapping. So everyone started clapping like, yeah, the event's done. Everyone, yeah. everyone went, grabbed their lunch and sat back down for a full EXP presentation. And I was like, genius. Cause, cause it's like, and they're running ads. To, they were, they were, they don't do this anymore, but they were running ads to that too, which, which would be allowed because you're running ads to your value, right. fill the seats. And then at the end, Hey, events over. If you want to stay in here, buddy XP. I mean, if I'm at your event, Terry, hearing about lead generation, and then, and I like what I'm hearing and you're like, Hey, if you guys want to stick around, grab your lunch, come back in. I'm going to talk about why we joined EXP. Uh, actually closed our Century 120 franchise because we saw that EXP had three different ways they paid their agents. So multiple streams of income for an agent for doing what you're always doing. So now we earn residual income. We earn stock in our company and we're, we operate on a great commission split. If you guys want to hear about it, come sit back down. I'm sitting back down. It's like, hey, I'm already here. And, and my, my fear is, and, and I've always talked about this because a lot of agents... I see in the company are going to just value, value, value. But it's like Gary Vaynerchuk's book, jab, 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 jab. It's a bunch of jabs. And then finally you write hook. Most salespeople in general, whether it be real estate or agent attraction, they never do the right hook. They only add value, 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 and never do the ask. So as a top attractor, you might actually circle back and do the ask. But for the agent that is just selling real estate, just joined EXP, invited their friend, they're never circling back with the person. That person's just gone forever. So if you can like sell them right there in the room and they get exposed to it, I feel like that would be so powerful and really help you get to your goal of 250. Yeah, uh, that, that's funny because when you're saying that, that's exactly what we did on the Lunch and Learns. We we did it where they didn't get the meal until the end. Yeah. So, you know, we would do the presentation and then they'd get their meal and then we would, you know, we'd be there for another hour or so, people asking questions, you know, digging deep, but we've gone to the value add thing that you, you, you nailed it, but that's a good idea. We'll, uh, yeah, well, I think since I'm, the one is, since I'm the one is doing them, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you can even hit play on the video, you know, doing a full value add presentation plus a full EXP explained. I mean, I wouldn't want to be the one doing all of that. You know, that'd be exhausting, but to just hit play on Brent's video or something while people are eating lunch, uh, I think that would be super powerful. Uh, I mean, I, I would sit in the room tomorrow if, if uh, I don't know, a, a compass recruiter was doing the event and, and they said, hey, stick around. Like, I'm like, well, I, I really don't know the, that model that intimately. I'd like to see their pitch and, and educate myself on a new model. So I think I think that's why everyone sits back down. Because yeah. they're just curious and they're already there and they got to eat their lunch anyway. So you got, you got butts in seats, you know, selling me XP. Um, we got a couple questions, Terry. Um, Kathy asked, do you charge for those events? No. Okay. You, you have sponsors still paying? Yeah, but and, and we actually went to uh, like my uh, AI training is nine o'clock in the morning to 1130. And then typically we're either nine in the morning or uh, 1230. So we avoid having to pay for the, the room is provided to us. They have an 80 one of the local uh, title companies built a training facility. And uh, so we have pretty much access to that. They have two of them. Uh, one will seat up to 80 and one will seat to 30. So nice. we don't have to pay for the room. Uh, I'd let sponsors, you know, that we use come in if they want. Uh, and if they want to provide, you know, donuts, coffee, something like that, we let them. But in general, it's come in, sit down. We're going to do some training, get them out there before we have to spend a lot of money. Cool. Awesome. Um, Kathy followed up with, what are your thoughts about charging, John and AJ? Um, for, for this specific model, I probably wouldn't charge um, for, for this one, but I, I could probably go either way on that. I, I probably wouldn't charge, though, if it's a smaller group. Yeah, I would start out not charging. And then if yeah. it felt like it became repetitive or saturated in the market, then I would charge as a way to bring in more value and bring in more like bigger speakers and a yep. bigger event and then you could like reinvigorate that market again with oh now we're going to go to this but this is bigger than what it was before mm -hmm. yeah yeah we have I, I don't have a long list of uh talent to bring into so most of the most of the uh, presentations is either chris or i and uh yeah so we we yeah we don't bring a lot we don't bring a lot of speakers in we brought i say that we brought brent in but you know, he did that on his own. I offered him to play at TPC Sawgrass. So, and then, <laughs> nice. uh, then they, 
when he, when he came here, they closed the course down to a uh, area at the green. So I didn't know if he was going to, I don't know if he'll even talk to me again. I haven't talked to him. Since. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, another question was, you know, did you ask a franchisee uh, how long do you have left with your franchise agreement? You know, just to, to avoid getting into like the legalese, uh, I'm just going to say you should always just say consult, have them consult their attorney. You know, you, you don't want to get deep in those conversations with them. Um, you know, I, I don't want to scare you guys away from talking to franchisees because they are looking and they are joining probably on a monthly basis. We're probably at least picking up a new franchisee, if not weekly. Uh, but definitely tread lightly. Um, if, if you are in conversation with somebody, like it sounds like you are, I would definitely either you consult an attorney or corporate and get their official answer on what you can and cannot say and, and have them consult their attorney. That's the right way to do it. Yeah. Because it is against the law to recruit other franchisees. That's why I said what you said KW is after you. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like, and, and this law exists because it's like McDonald's would have a prospecting team prospecting all the Burger King franchisees all day long. Like that's that would be their strategy to grow McDonald's. Um, so that's kind of why it's illegal. Now, it's funny because we were the local uh, recruiter for KW you know, had reached out to us because of our production and uh, they set a call up. And so we're talking to somebody, I don't know, you know, it might've been Gary, I don't, but anyway, so we're talking and uh, they're, they say, well, you know, we can do this and we can do that. And we can, you know, your production will have, you know, justify this. And they're going back and forth. Yeah, and Chris goes, yeah, he goes, and we're still working with Century 21 on getting out of the franchise. And it was like, dead silence i mean it was like the phone disconnected there was i mean there was no noise from the other and they, they probably muted the phone and the, <laughs> the guy goes did i understand are you are you century 21 franchise and they go yeah and the guy goes oh uh hey hey guys look we didn't know that you know <laughs> they started backing up you know it was funny but i mean it it stopped right then it was over there was no more discussion and uh, but the, so the, the local recruiter was, you know, wide open, you know, trying to get us, but when it got up line, they found out we were a franchisee, they were not yeah. you know, shut it down. Somebody said it in the comments, like you can share your model ad nauseum. Like you can tell them everything about EXP in your model. You just can't talk about them coming and joining. They have to make that conclusion on their own. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the big things that people do is try like, they ask us how we got out of our franchise. We have to be very careful about that. Now, with that's us, an obvious, like that's a, yeah, that's an obvious, like, don't answer that. But yeah. one of the more subtle ways that, that they might do it is they might say, so, so what, what would you do to help me get started if I came over? And mm -hmm. it's like, well, hey, I can't talk to you about coming over. You'd have to talk to your attorney. I'm just telling you what we do over here. Yeah. When yeah, that's pretty much, that's, I, I did have that conversation with Jan, but she's not she's not you know pursuing it so it's more just a conversation kind of thing but but no you're right if she if if i hear her turn that you know that they're actually starting to think about it it's going to be you know what what does your attorney say before we go any further but good point perry we're up on the hour i got one final question for you if you were starting over or if you could give one piece of advice to an attractor looking to take this thing to the next level or just getting started what is like the first thing or two that they should do? Like before anything, the first thing or two they should do based on your experience. Yeah. The list, uh, you know, you got to make the list up. My list is, uh, I have 160 people on my list that I work, but it's, I have to sit down and clean it. Cause I got people on there that, you know, I haven't talked to in weeks or months. Uh, but, you know, come up with the list that's, that gives you something to focus on and just get after it. You know, uh, Chris and I went at it half hearted. I mean, we did the, we were the only ones doing lunch and learns, but it was kind of that was the full extent of what we were doing. We weren't burning the phones up, you know, trying to get people in. But that, you know, set that routine, set some time aside for it. And I I, I hate to think about where I'd be had I been doing that for the full four years here. but. Create make the list, list, make the calls. Make your list, make the calls, update your list, clean your list, <laughs> maintain your list. list. You know, that's kind of what we always teach. You know, success in agent attraction is simple. It's not easy. It's simple, yeah. not easy. That's why we need accountability. That's why we need to constantly stay in the energy of other attractors, uh, successful attractors. 
Uh, another thing I noticed behind you, behind your shoulder, you got the wealth chart up on your wall. So you got your hot prospects in front of you. You're thinking about it. That's a visual representation of your organization, of your prospects. Uh, so that's great too. If you guys aren't familiar with the wealth chart, the concept, if you go in the guides section of Game Changers Nation, there is a video in under getting started of Rob Flick, the creator of the wealth chart, explaining it. Uh, there's a couple videos on the wealth chart. So check that out in the file section. We have a download and you can make it just like Terry's, take it to Staples, that file, have it laminated. You can use some post-its, dry erase markers. It's, it's a really great way to, to manage your organization. So awesome, Terry. Anything else you want to leave us with? No, no, I'm uh, I'm not able to go to Cabo this time, but I'll probably be out there in Dallas and see everybody. So, so enjoy it. I will I will be there as well, San Antonio this year. It's uh, going to be exciting to have a new venue. San Antonio? Okay. Yeah. John's been to the hotel, it sounds like. Amazing venue, John. Yeah, it's a brand new JW Marriott. I think one of the newest nice. in the whole circuit. And just uh, it, it'll be a really cool venue for us to be at. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for everyone for being on. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.